Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Destiny Church Online Worship Experience. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome. Come on into the sanctuary. Let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's give him some praise this morning. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Destiny Church. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Come on, let's praise him this morning. Let's praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning. We see you out there, Facebook. We see you, YouTube, freeconferencecall.com. Good morning, God bless you, welcome. Church Online, good morning, God bless you, welcome. Wherever you're joining us from, we praise God for you. Come on, let's get our praise on this morning. Worthy is his name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Let's praise him. I see you out there. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's have a good time in the Lord today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, give him the praise, give him the honor, give him the glory today. How you feeling this morning, good? <laughs> Come on, let's praise him together. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Worthy is day. Hey. Come on, let's praise him. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Come on, let's praise him. Glory. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Well, good morning and God bless you. Welcome to Destiny Church Online Worship Experience. I am so excited about today. I mean, God has just given us another chance and I am just, I for one do not take that for granted. Listen, I just want to say, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to each and every one of you joining with us here at Destiny Church Online Worship Experience. We are so excited that God has given us this opportunity to join in together and even more so that he's allowed you, come on somebody, to worship with us here at Destiny Church. Yes, we are still worshiping 100% online, virtually, amen. And we just praise God for this opportunity to share with each and every one of you. And listen, if this is your first time worshiping with us, welcome. You are our special guest. We want you just to sit back, relax, and allow the spirit to move however it's going to move in your life on today. And so listen, I want to, uh, which is our, our custom, to start our service off by reading a passage of scripture. And I want to read from Psalm 100. Psalm 100 is where we will be um, taking our opening scripture from. And this is what it says. It's Psalm 100, reading from the New International Version. Here is what it says. It says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy and righteous word. I have read for you Psalm 100 in its entirety. Amen. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, how we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good and gracious to us to allow us to see it. Father, we recognize you didn't have to do it, but you did. You woke us up this morning, got us going on our way, and for that, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for allowing us to worship you in spirit and in truth, even 100% virtually online. We thank you for that, oh God. And we thank you for each and every individual joining with us right now, live, no matter what platform they're on, or if they're watching a recording, we praise God for them. And God, we just want to ask that you would look inside of our hearts. If there's anything in there that's not like you, please remove it. Please make us better, brighter, bolder, all for your glory, oh God. Simply put, we're asking you, Lord, to please forgive us of our sins. Wipe our slates clean. Thank you for giving us another chance. Father, I pray that you would go through these airwaves today, that you would reach out and touch us, Lord, personally, one by one, oh God. So much so, Father, that by the end of this message, by the end of this service, we know for sure that we had an encounter with you and you alone, oh God. We pray, Father, that even though we're not in the sanctuary together, that you would con connect us, God, through your Holy Spirit. And Father, we pray that you would just bless us and keep us and guide us and direct us and do what you do best, oh God, and that's bless, Father. We'd also like to ask that if you would please bless today's offering, maybe you for the upkeep of your kingdom here on earth. Please bless the gift and the giver, oh God. And Father, we also ask if you would please expand our territory so much so that our cups runneth over and we can be a blessing to somebody else. Father, we want to thank you in advance for victory. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Together in love, we say amen, amen, and praise God. Well, good morning and welcome to each and every one of you joining with us here this morning. Thank you. We just praise God for you uh, on Facebook, YouTube, preconferencecall.com, church online, or wherever you're joining us from. We praise God for you. And listen, just because we're virtual doesn't mean we can't be interactive. And so listen, feel free to type in the chat room. Talk back to us. Talk to each other. Let's, let's stay connected. This is our sanctuary, and God has drawn us together from all over the world. We are blessed as a church to have grown as meant through the pandemic, even though a lot of churches may have uh, fallen off due to um, um, online being online and people not feeling connected, the Lord has blessed Destiny Church to grow. And so we have new family members from all over the world, and we praise God for each and every one of you. And so listen, I um, just want to give a few pastoral points. Again, if this is your first time worshiping with us, 
Good morning and God bless you. Welcome. You are our special guest and we want you just to sit back and relax and allow the Holy Spirit to move however it's going to move in your life on today. And listen, if you want more information about our church, you can go to our website, which is www.destinychurchmd.org. That's www.destinychurchmd, as in Maryland, dot org. And there, you can find out more information about our church, about our church family, about myself as pastor and servant leader, um, and also about my family. We just want you to get connected with us. So check out our website at www.destinychurchmd.org. And over the next couple of months, we're going to be getting a website update and some new techno, techno, technological wow features, amen, on our website that we pray are going to be a blessing to the ministry and blessing to each and every one of you. So check out our website www.destinychurchmd.org. But also, if you want to stay in the loop about what's going on at Destiny Church, you can text the word LOOP, L-O-O-P, to 240-377-0811. That's 240-377-0811. If you text the word LOOP, L-O-O-P, to that phone number, 240-377-0811, what that'll do is that'll connect you to our text message and email service, and therefore you can stay in the loop as to what we got going on here at Destiny Church. And we are blessed that even though we are virtual, 100% virtual, we still have things, a lot going on uh, here at Destiny Church. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, each Tuesday, every Tuesday that the Lord allows, at 7.30 p.m., we have what we call Transformation Tuesdays. Uh, adult Bible study and we really want you to join in with us we just came off of our um, our summer break uh, last week we just had our first uh, one for the season and so our first Bible study for the season and we had a good time we are currently studying from the theme getting stronger through getting stronger through and so that uh, Bible study series is going to take us through different uh, areas of our life loves and labors through the Word of God that we where we can grow stronger come on somebody uh, grow stronger in every area of our uh, every every area of our lives and so right now the first the first section of the first rubric if you will of our study is getting stronger through growing stronger through worship and so we had an awesome time this past Tuesday um, anybody who was there uh, you can type in the chat room and, and testify how what a great time we had in the Word of God. And we want you to join us 7.30 on Tuesday evenings uh, via Zoom. And so if you can text the word loop to 240-377-0811, you can get the Zoom link to our Transformation Tuesdays Bible study, which starts at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern uh, each Tuesday night. But also every other Tuesday, we will have, uh, we have our youth and young adult video chat with the pastor that's uh 6 30 p.m every other tuesday so we had it this past tuesday so we won't have it this tuesday we'll have it next tuesday but uh every other tuesday at 6 30 p.m eastern we have our youth and young adult chat with the pastor with pastor g and um and that allows our young people our youth and our young adults to get online and have a conversation with me and we talk about whatever's going on with them i want to hear from them i want them to, con to connect with them and if we need to take it offline we definitely will do that amen um and so we had an awesome time this past week on our first hookup after our summer break and i was just so excited uh, for our young people who've gone back to school and who are doing new things. Some of them have jobs, some of them have gone off to college, but we're still connecting. We still want to stay connected. So encourage your young people and your young adults to connect with us every other Tuesday, so not this coming Tuesday, but next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom, and they can get that Zoom link by texting the word LOOP to 240-377-0811 because we're doing things here at Destiny Church. Amen. But also, listen, if you want to email in your prayer request or your or your praise report, we want you to do that. So you can email us at prayerbuilds at gmail.com. That's prayerbuilds, B-U-I-L-D-S at gmail.com. You can send in your prayer request or your praise reports because listen, we are a praying church. Somebody say amen. And it is our goal to turn prayer requests into praise reports. And so send your prayer requests and your, or your praise reports and your praise reports to uh, prayerbuilds at gmail 
dot com. And also, listen, if you're in need of of counseling or mentorship, or if you want to contact me as pastor or servant leader, you can also email me directly and privately at prayerbuilds at gmail.com. And we want to connect with you. Um, also, I want to uh, thank each and every one of you who have been obedient to the Lord. This is strictly between you and the Lord uh, in regards to tithes and offerings and donations. Uh, here at Destiny Church, you have two ways that you can uh, you can give if the Lord is leading you to. And let me just say this. Tithes, offerings, and donations are strictly between you and God. There is no obligation. However, when God, if God places it on your heart to give, uh, you in turn are being a blessing to this ministry. You're allowing us to, um, to grow, to further our reach across the world, um, and to share the word of God as he has called and instructed us to. So listen, if you want to, if the Lord leads you to give in any capacity, and let me say, no gift is too small or too large. So however the Lord is leading you, we, we will be blessed. And so you can give two ways here at Destiny Church. The first way is through the Givelify app. You can go to our website, tap on online donations, or, yeah, online donations, and it'll take you directly to the Givelify app. Or you can go to the App Store, download the Givelify app, search for uh, Destiny Church, Waldorf, Maryland, and you can give however the Lord is leading you to give. So Givelify is one way that you can give, but you also can give through Cash App. The church now has a Cash App account, and so all you have to do is put in our, our, our tag, our Cash App tag, which is dollar sign Destiny Church Waldorf, all one word, dollar sign Destiny Church Waldorf, and uh, you can give, again, however the Lord is leading you to give, and we praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. I think that's it. Um, as far as pastoral points, I don't think I've, I've forgotten anything. Again, good morning. God bless you to those of you joining with us uh, right now. Uh, we just praise God for you. So listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play another selection, uh, a brief selection. And then after this next selection, we're going to get into the word of God. So listen, call somebody, text somebody, holler in the other room, let them know we're worshiping and we're getting ready to get in the word and they don't want to miss today's word. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, uh, it's time for the Word of God, and again, I want to welcome each and every one of you who have just tuned in to our broadcast. God bless you, uh, and heaven smile on you. We just thank God for your presence on Facebook, YouTube, freeconferencecall.com, church online, or wherever you're worshiping with us. We praise God for you. Um, it's time for the Word of God, and listen, if you have your Bibles or your smart device or whatever you have, I'd like for you to turn to the book of Judges, the first chapter. Judges, the first chapter chapter is where we'll be shining our sermonic spotlight on today amen judges the first chapter and today we'll be um zeroing in on verses 1 through 11 but listen i want to invite you and encourage you to uh read the whole uh first chapter of judges uh, in your quiet time, you can use it as your own personal Bible study, but today we'll be zeroing in on Judges, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11. And listen, if you're struggling to find Judges, it is in the Old Testament. But listen, every if you're using your Bible, the book, every Bible comes with uh, a free gift, and it's called the Table of Contents. It's in the front of the book. All you have to do is turn to the uh, Table of Contents, find the uh, book of Judges. It'll turn you tell you what page to turn to, and here... Today we'll be in Judges, the first chapter, excuse me, verses 1 through 11. I'll be reading from the New International Version, but whatever version you have this morning is fine. It is exactly that. It is a version of the word. It might read a little different, but the meaning still is the same. Amen. Uh, Judges, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11 is where we'll be zeroing in on today. And listen, this is what I want you to do. If you have found Judges, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11, I want you to shout out in a loud voice and type in your respective chat rooms. I'm pointing at all the cameras. Uh, type in your respective chat rooms, I've got it. Praise God. Praise God. I, I, I constantly think I can hear some of y'all yelling from all across the world. I've got it. I've got it. Listen, somebody is wondering what it is you have. You've got to tell them, I've got the word of God. And you need to get it for yourself. Mm, yeah, tell them. You need to get it for yourself. I've got it. I've got it. Judges, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11. Amen. Amen. Verses 1 through 11. I see all the I got it's. Praise God. Um, judges, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11, reading from the New International Version. This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, after the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord... Who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? The Lord answered, Judah shall go up. I have given the land into their hands. 
The men of Judah then said to the Simeonites, their fellow Israelites, Come up with us into the territory allotted to us to fight against the Canaanites. We in turn will go with you into yours. So the Simeonites went with them. When Judah attacked, the Lord gave the Canaanites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands, and they struck down 10,000 men at Bezak. It was there that they found out found Adonai Bezak and fought against him, putting to putting to rout the Canaanites and Perizzites. Adonai Bezak fled, but they chased him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Whoa. Then Adonai, Adonai Bezak said, Seventy kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off have picked up scraps under my table. Now God has paid me back for what I did to them. They brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. The men of Judah attacked Jerusalem also and took it. They put the city to the sword and set it on fire. After that, Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites living in the hill country, the Negev, and the western foothills. They advanced against the Canaanites living in Hebron, formerly called Kirath Arba, and defeated Sheshe, Ahiman, and Telamai. From there, they advanced against the people living in Debor, formerly called Karath Sefer. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy and righteous word. And I just want to go back up to verse 1 where it says, After the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, Who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? The Lord answered, Judah shall go up. I have given the land into their hands. And I want to put a title to this text and talk about it for the short time that is ours, A Good Start. Amen. Amen. I need your prayers this morning. A Good Start is the title of our, of our message today. A Good Start. Amen. Um, growing up as a little boy and even into, even into my adulthood, I can always remember my father waking up early, having a cup of coffee or two, and getting his job as getting to his job as an electrician early before he was scheduled to start. I mean, my dad would get up early, have his coffee, uh, maybe a small uh, bite bite to eat, and and he would get out the door very early and usually get to his job site. He was he was an electrician. He's retired now. Get to his job site before everybody else. I can remember asking him why he did his early morning routine pretty much the same every weekday. And, 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 and my dad, why do you get to work before anybody else? That's what I really want to know. Why do you, you get up so early? Why do you, you know, get, grab your coffee and you get into uh, the shop or the construction site way before anybody else? And, I never, and I'll never forget the, the overall message of his response. Uh, he, he said something to, to the effect of, I get up early and get going early so I can get to work and get organized for my day before everyone else gets there. My, my dad had this premise in his mind that, that if he got there early and got organized and got set up before anybody else got there, uh, before, the, before it was really time to start work, that it would cause him to have a good day. He shared with me basically that it's important to have a, a good start to your day. Come on, somebody. If you want to have a better chance of things going good throughout and to the end of your days and weeks. This is one of the lessons my dad has always taught. And, and, and I realized through my own life experiences and trials and errors of my own that when you start good, come on, somebody, work with me, you have a better chance of finishing good. If you start good, I'm going to say that again, you have a better chance of going through and finishing good. Doesn't always happen exactly like that, but if you start good, you start your day off, you start your week off, start your month off good, you have a better chance, a better opportunity, come on somebody, of starting or finishing good later on. And if you and if you were really to think about it, isn't good and great what you want to have throughout your life, loves and labors? Come on, y'all talk back to me in the chat rooms or something. I mean, think about it. What does it take for you to have a good start to your day, your week, or your month? There are people, there are many people who believe in getting a good start on the day by having a good breakfast or a good cup of coffee. Some people, you know, can't even be talked to in the morning until they have their, their coffee or their energy drink. If that's you, look straight ahead. Don't tell anyone. 
yourself. Uh, there, there, there's some pilots, there's some people, there's some people that have to have, uh, that, 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 that in order for them to have a good start to their day, they, they go through exercise or listening to their favorite music or radio show. Come on, somebody. Am I, have, I hit, have I stepped on your toes yet? In order to have a good day, in order to have a good week, in order to have a good moment, they have to do something or have something. Come on, somebody. That they think in their minds that will help them to have a, a good start. And they, they, if they have a, a good start, they can have a, a good finish. And I'm not knocking what you do or anyone or anyone else may do as their ritual in order to try and have a good day. But the Holy Spirit led me across some scripture that, that, that will not only fortify us in having a good start to our days, come on somebody, but it will also lead us to having a good start in every area of our life, love, and labors. Come on. Because because we, 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 we if we're honest with ourselves, we really need a good start in more things than just our days, our weeks, and our months. We need a good start in, in several uh, uh, situations in our life, loves, and labors, because I need somebody to understand today that every day that God allows us, come on, allows us to wake up is the first day of the rest of our lives. Can I say that again? Because you might have missed it if you're taking notes. I need you to write this down. Every day that the Lord allows you to wake up uh, is the is the is a good day. It's a good thing. He allows us to have the for it to be the first day of the rest of our lives. And no matter what you've been through in your past, yeah, even yesterday, today is God's is God is offering you a brand new start. And I don't know about you, uh, but I, I there's some things in my life that I, I need a redo. I need a, a reset. I need a a fresh start. And, and God has allowed that. He gives us the opportunity every single day. And I know some of us are stuck on yesterday. Some people, you know, are stuck on their past. They're stuck and we hold on to things. Yeah, we do. But I got to let you know that God offers us an opportunity. I'm getting into this thing right now. That God offers us this opportunity to have a fresh start every day. Come on, somebody. Every day that you and I are blessed to wake up is an opportunity to get it, get it, whatever your it is right or better. It's an opportunity to get it right or better. So if you've messed up, if you've fallen off, if you've had some struggles yesterday or in the past, today, this day that the Lord has made, this day that he's woke, woken us, awakened us, woken us up, however you say it right, I'm in the mood, right right now, he got us up this morning. There it is. He got us up this morning. God is going on our way. And the fact that he's given us this opportunity is a fresh chance of life. You have the opportunity for a new direction in your health today because he woke you up. You have the opportunity for a new way of handling things. You and I have the opportunity for a new perspective in our problems. Are y'all getting this yet? You and I have the opportunity because he woke us up today to have a fresh opportunity to work on your relationship. Today is your fresh opportunity to work on you, your attitude or your associations. What is it that you need to work on? What is it that you want to get better? What is it that you want to be better at? What is it that you want to be stronger? What is it that you want to be have more joy? Where is it that you want to have more peace? Well, today, somebody say today. Today is the first day of the rest of your life because God, thank you, Lord, has given us a brand new chance. God has given us a brand new opportunity. Today is the first day of the rest of your life and whatever. Mm, 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 mm. Whatever it is that you needed some new, fresh, better, stronger, or clearer, when God woke you up this morning, when God woke me up this morning, he offered us a fresh opportunity. I don't know about you, but I want to make the most out of the opportunities that God has, has given me starting today and right now because tomorrow is not promised and today is the first day of the rest of your life. Is there anybody here? Come on, somebody. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice and you want to take the full opportunity that God is giving you today? How do I know he's giving you a fresh opportunity? Well, you can hear me, right? He woke you up this morning, got you going on your way. He didn't have to do it because you know what? Let me just tell the truth right now because last night was somebody's last night but God saw fit to give you and I a fresh start. He gave us today. Somebody shout thank you Lord for today.
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen, listen. He's given us, he's given us a brand new chance. I know you had stuff going on. And I know, let me just tell you, you still got some stuff going on. But today, right now, this morning, God has given us a brand new opportunity to handle it. Watch this. Or better yet, allow him to handle whatever's been trying to handle us. So listen, before I move on, I wish I had about three or four people that would holler out and or type in the chat room. I want to make the most out of this time God has given me. Go on and type that in the chat room. I want to make the most out of this time God has given me today. Today. And if you can't, that's too much for you to type. Just type out today. I want it all today. I want what God has for me today. Today, I'm going to start brand new. Today, I'm going to be thankful. Today, I'm going to be grateful. Today, I'm going to start stronger. And from this day forward, come on, somebody, because today, the God God gave me this morning. Today he's given it to me and I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to take this opportunity that God has given me today to make the best out of today. And it all requires a, a good start. Yeah, 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 yeah. No matter what it is that you're dealing with, no matter what it is you desire, no matter what it is you got going on or you think you've been missing. Come on, somebody. Today is the first day of the rest rest of your life. And if that's you, if you really want to make the most out of what God is offering you today, come on somebody, if that's you and you want to make the most out of the opportunities that God gives us, then you're in the right place at the right time because today, there it is, we're going to zero in on what we really need to do in order to have a good start, come on somebody, God's way. And I'm not just talking about a good start of your morning. I'm not just talking about a good start of your day because as my father taught me, come on somebody, I like to share with you that if you start good, you have a better chance of finishing good. And I don't know what it is that you need to start over or start afresh. I don't know what it is that you need to that you've been focused in on. I don't know what it is you've been asking God for, but today, somebody shout out today. <laughs> today is the first day of the rest of your life. And no matter what it is, uh, you and I are going to learn how to get into a good start. And what I want to encourage someone today is this. I want to encourage you to understand that no matter what is going on in your life, loves and labors, no matter, somebody type a shout out, no matter, huh? no matter what challenges you may have or have had, Today is a new day that God has given each of us and we can move brand new right now in every area if we focus in on having a good start to whatever it is God's way. I don't know what it is you're trying to get going. I don't know what it is you're trying to fix. I don't know what it is you've been asking God for. But today we're going to learn how to have a good start to God's way. And so listen. Whatever we're going, and so what we're going to discover in our text today, let me break it down for you quickly, is that in chapter one of Judges, the children of Israel did, did get a good start in serving the Lord after Joshua died. Unfortunately, they, as you read on the further chapters in Judges, and I, I encourage you to do so, unfortunately, they didn't continue in their walk with the Lord. But that doesn't, that's not going to deter us, you see, because we can still learn from their good start and copy their good examples, and then what we're going to do is we're going to work to carry it beyond where they did so we can have a good finish as well. Come on, somebody. In God's word, yes, he shows us. This is what I love about God's word. God's word will show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it allows us to latch on to the good. Come on, somebody. And work through the bad and the ugly. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do today through this text. Uh, we're going to learn and talk about how we can all have a good start uh, so we can hang on to our good finish. And so if you're here today and you want to have a good start, a godly start to anything in your life, loves, and labors. Come on, this is anything, anything you can imagine in your life, loves, and labors. I'm talking about finances. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about education. I'm talking about spiritual. I'm talking about emotional. Come on, somebody, help. Me. I'm talking about your health. If you really want to have a good start to anything in your life, loves, and labors, the first thing we must do like the children of Israel is they asked God. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I know it seems simple, but it, but, it, but it really is just that simple. The first thing that this text is tended to teach us is if we're really going to have a good start, somebody type in the chat room, good start. If you're really going to have a good start to whatever it is, the first thing you and I have to do 
is ask God. Said it right there in verse 1, after the death of Joshua, the Israel's Israelites asked the Lord. Mm, there it is. Who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? See, listen to this. If we're going to start or finish anything right or good, the first thing we always need to do is ask God. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter uh, what you feel you might be up against. The first thing you always want to do is ask God. Somebody say, ask God. Yeah, yeah. you want to ask God every day. We needed to get into the habit of speaking to God first before we do or say mm, anything. Yeah, yeah, see, that's a problem for some of us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, that's a problem for any of us. For some of us, many of us want to just pop off at the mouth. We get upset. We get frustrated. We get emotional. We get whatever it is, and we just pop off at the mouth. But I dare you. I double dog dare you to ask God first. Ask God before you say it. Ask God before you do it. Ask God before you go there. Ask God before you text it. Ask God before you put it on social media. Ask God before you get upset. God, how do you feel about this? God, what should I do? Where should I go? Who should I talk to? God, help me. When you ask God, watch this, you'll find out that he'll also answer you. And if you really want a good start to whatever it is you're getting ready to get into, you should ask God. Now, this doesn't mean that negatives won't happen or come at you, but if you want to be able to deal with them better, you've got to ask God. Somebody say, ask God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The text is tailored to teach us that it, that, that it was... Israel's responsibility to conquer the promised land. God said it was theirs, but he told them they got to go get it. Come on, somebody. And so they asked God for guidance. It's our responsibility just as well to be good soldiers for Christ. And the only way we can actually do that is if we ask for guidance, especially if you don't understand the assignment or the directions. Because James 1 and 5, y'all write this down. James 1 and 5, or better yet, the Bible says in James 1 and 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. That's the word. I didn't make it up. Watch this. In other words, if you got something, when you got something, where you got something going on, huh, you and I need to ask God because watch this. We may think we know, but God always knows better. I know you've been parenting for a while. I know your children are a bit older but you're never too old to ask God. I know you've been on your job for a while. I know you've been doing your thing for a while, but you're never too old. You're never too uh, involved to ask God. I know you've been in that relationship for a long time and it's going left and right or up and down, however it's going to go, but you've not been in it too long to ask God. As a matter of fact, every day that we wake up, uh, you know, that fresh start God gives us, he's actually looking for us to ask him how, what, where, and who. If you want a good start, uh, you got to ask God because although you got some experience or some experience is, watch this, God knows all before you and I do. So why not ask him, Lord, how can I work this out? Lord, how can I be better at this? Lord, what does my mate need from me? Lord, what do you desire from me? Lord, how can I fix this? Lord, how can I get better at this? Lord, how can I get healthy? Lord, I need, I need you to tell me. But watch this, if you want a good start, and a good finish and a good great all the way through, no matter what comes ask, a, at you, the first thing you and I need to do is you've got to ask God. There's a say, saying that I heard a lot growing up, a closed mouth will not get fed. You got to say something to the one who knows greater than you so you can go farther. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice and you've been struggling? in one area of life, love, or labors, or another, and you've been wondering how you can get it better? Well, first of all, if you want to start it better, if you want a good start, you've got to ask God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other day, the other day, uh, 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 the other day, uh, 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 Chancellor, our 15-year-old son, uh, had a, a virtual open house uh, at his school. He's still taking classes virtually, and so they had a virtual open house that, that my wife uh, attended um, 
uh, the other day and it was great. Um, she, we got some really good feedback. And one of the, the great things that we got, we got an email from one of uh, Chancellor's teachers who said, uh, you know, that we asked, you know, how is Chancellor doing? Is there any issues, any problems, anything we should know about? And if so, just let us know. Well, the teacher uh, responded, responded to the email and, and gave Chancellor very high praise for, because really she said that anytime Chancellor doesn't understand something, which is not a lot, if he doesn't a understand something or wants to get a, get a little deeper into the subject, Chancellor will take it upon himself to contact her via Zoom. Uh, they have Zoom classes where you can go and the teachers are doing Zoom hours and Chancellor, if he doesn't understand something, will go and, and ask her. And she said his questions are very in depth and to the point, he's very polite and respectful, but he gets it. And then he turns around and takes the information that she shared with him, watch this, applies it to his work and it caused him to turn in a very high level of work. She, her expectations of him are high because he asks the right questions, gets the right information and takes that information and moves forward forward so we can have a good start. Huh? Who am I talking to right now? That's exactly what God wants from each of us. Come on, y'all. Every single day, he wants us to ask him and allow him to lead us in the right way. I know you think you know. I know you think you should, the way you know the way you should go. I know you think you know what's right. I know you think you know how to fix it or make it better, but just in case you don't, huh, you really need to ask God. And can I just put this in there for free? We need to ask God even when we think we know because some of the stuff we think we know has shifted or changed and God knows everything that's going on. So listen, if you really want to have a good start in your life, loves and labors, not just to your day, your week or your month. Come on, this is in every area of your life. If you really want to have a good start or to start good, the first thing you got to do is ask God. Somebody say, ask God. Yeah, yeah, ask God. The second thing, the second thing that the Israelites teach us in this text is the first thing they did was they asked God. That's how they got off to their good start. The second thing that they did uh, in, in regards to getting off to, to starting good or getting off to a good start is they not only asked God, watch this, they did this. They believed God. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. Not only did they ask God, they believed God. And that's what you and I need to do. It says it right there in verses two and three. It says, the Lord answered. Wait a minute. Hold on. Back up, G. You mean to tell me they asked God and he answered? Yeah, that's exactly what God will and wants to do for you and I. A lot of us don't get the answers or the direction that we need from God because simply we don't ask. So listen, here's what they did. They asked God and then they believed God because in verse two it says, the Lord answered, Judah shall go up. I have given the land into their hands. And then the men of Judah then said to the Semonites, their fellow Israelites, come up with us into the territory allotted to us to fight against the Canaanites. So in turn, and we in turn will go with you into yours. So the Semonites went with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They not only asked God, but they believed God. Somebody needs to type that in the chat room. Ask God, believe God. Yeah, God said... Watch this, that the tribe of Judah should go first and they believe what God told them and they acted. You see, when we ask God for direction, he'll give them to us and we need to believe him. One of the greatest disservices we can ever do to ourselves and God is to not take him at his word. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. In other words, God is not like us. When he says something, we need to believe him. I don't know who this is for, but God is going to give you some directions or some instructions that will be beyond you, but not beyond him. Come on, somebody. He'll tell you some things. And immediately in our minds, a lot of us are going to say, I can't do that. I can't handle that. That's beyond me. But watch this. It may be beyond you. And it may be beyond me, but it's not beyond God. And we need to learn how to believe him and to operate in his strength and not our own. There are some things that when you ask him, God is going to direct you to do that you can't do on your own, but God. Here we go, y'all. But God. When you put a but God in the middle or the midst of your situation, it changes the direction of what you could have done on yourself. You see, when you put a but God, 
in your relationship, it changes the, the parameters and the perspectives of your re relationship. When you put but God in your health, uh, it changes the direction. It'll even change sometimes what the doctor said. When you put but God in your finances, where you thought there was more month than money, uh, you'll find out that God will help you stretch uh, way more than you can ever do on your own. You got to believe him for what he has said. And when he gives you direction, We've got to follow the directions that God gives us. We got to ask him and then we've got to believe him, take him at his word. You see, see many of us, that's why we end up faltering, flopping or failing because we're thinking about our own strength. But God is not going to send you to do anything that he's prepared to give you the power or the tools for. So when we say we can't, we can't do or handle something that God has told us to do or handle. Come on, somebody. The problem is not God's instructions. The problem is our belief. You see, is there anybody here? Let me ask you this question. Is there anybody here and, and God has told you that you will win, your family will be blessed, or y'all will make it? Then take him at his word and believe exactly what he said. Come on, somebody. That's where you got to put a but God. Somebody type that in the chat room. A but God into your situation. This is the part where you go ahead and throw a but, but God at your doubt, a but God at your fears, a but God at your past, a but God at your haters and naysayers, a but God at anything that you are struggling with. Because when you throw a but God at the situation, it has to turn around because my God is able woo, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ever ask and think. So when I put a but God in areas that I was stumped or stopped, huh? God will give me the breakthrough, the blessing, and he'll get all the glory. What's your problem? What's your situation? What's your struggle? You got to believe God to, to do exactly what he said. Listen, God wants you to trust and believe in him, believe in his word, believe in his directions. I know you can't see it, but that's okay because if God said it, it's going to be so. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to you got to ask God. You got to believe God if you want to have a good start or if you want to start good. Come on somebody, but not only I got to move, I got to get out of here. Watch this. Not only, not only not only do we need to, to ask God, not only do we need to believe God, but finally our text is tended to teach us that we also need to obey God. If you and I want to start good or have a good start so we can have a better chance of having a good finish by God's standards, come on somebody, you got to ask God, you got to believe God, and then you have to obey God. It's right there in verses four through eight of this text. It says, when Judah attacked, the Lord gave the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they struck down 10,000 men at Bezak. Now, really, I'm not going to read all that. That's just verse 4, but verses 4 through 8, you want to read it again in your quiet time. What we find out is, because the children of Israel asked God, they believed God, and they obeyed God, they got the victory. They won against uh, uh, an army, come on somebody, that others said they could not defeat. They won against armies, and if you go on and read the rest of the text, what you'll find out is they won that battle, come on somebody, and kept on winning. They kept on winning. They kept on conquering the land that God had said was theirs in the first place. And I want you to get this. I want you to understand something, that God had told them previously this was going to be their promised land. That he promised this land to him, to them, this land of milk and honey. And I know that God has made some promises to you and I. He's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He promised us to give us a hope and a future. He promised to prosper us. And God is always good at his word. But this doesn't mean that you and I won't have to put in some work. 
Just because God has promised to bless us doesn't mean he won't use us in order to get us to the blessing that he promised us. God uh, uh, told the Israelites in order to get the land, you got to conquer it. But don't worry, I've got you. You just need to go out there and fight and I'm going to make sure that you win. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. This ain't even in my notes. Uh, Holy Spirit is talking to me about talking to somebody right now. But I know you're going through something. I know you've been dealing with some stuff and the Lord has told you to press on and you're wondering, how can I make it? You have even might have even said, look straight ahead, don't tell yourself. You might have even said, I can't. It didn't work before. This is not how it was supposed to be. But God, that's the part that you're missing. You got to ask him, then believe him, then obey him. Because listen, one of the problems that many of us have in regards to our growth in life, loves, and labors is that we tend to want to do things our own way because it may seem easier or more comfortable. Mm -hmm, there it is. But if you really want to start good and finish good, the truth is we have to be obedient to the directions from God. Understand that God gives each of us free will and a choice, but the right choice, mm, the right choice, if you want to be blessed and to give God glory is to be obedient. I know you want to do it your way. I know you want, oh my gosh, young people, are you listening to me right now? I know that there's a way, there's a way that seems right on social media. I know some of your friends who are the same age or a little bit older or young, younger than you are telling you to do things a particular way, but God, come on somebody, see a lot of folks your own age, young people, don't know anything more than you do. So they're really just telling you to do something because they don't want to do it by themselves. But I dare you, I double dog dare you young people to be obedient to God, to get into his word, to ask him for the directions, ask him how you can be a better friend, ask him how you can be better in your relationships, ask him how you can be better in school, ask him how you can be better in whatever it is your endeavors are. And God will show you. And when he tells you what it is, you need to believe him and obey. Understand that God gives each of us free will. You have a choice, but the right choice. Now, this is for everybody, not just young people. I just want to give them a special piece. This is for everybody. God, the right choice is for us to give God glory through obedience. As we look back uh, at our text, we learn that God's people simply did what God told them to do. And when it comes to the things of God, there is no substitute for obedience. Now, I said earlier that later on they fell off because they let that obedience part go. But listen, if you want to stay connected, if you want to stay blessed, if you want to grow stronger, then you've got to ask, believe, and obey. When you obey God, what you're saying is, I trust trust you because we may not always immediately understand why God is calling us to do a certain thing, but understand this. If God called you to it, uh, he'll see you through it. And that you should trust. If you really, really, really want to make it, you want your business to be blessed. Uh, you want your household to be blessed. You want your finances to be blessed. You got to ask, come on somebody. You got to believe uh, and you got to obey. Listen, listen, I got to say this. Last thing, and now I'm going to get out of here. Here's a little story for you. It's funny. It's funny to me. But uh, but over the past few years, I've really come to depend on my GPS app, Waze. I, I really have. I've really uh, become to depend on Waze. It's a GPS app. You put in your uh, information, where you're trying to go, and it tells you how to get there. Uh, no matter, and I, and, I, and, I, and I count on ways, watch this, no matter what vehicle, I, what vehicle I'm in, regardless if I'm in my vehicle, my wife's vehicle, or we've had to rent, some, rent something for whatever reason, or anybody's vehicle, I always depend on my GPS app ways. I've even learned, come on somebody, to depend on ways to get me around locally. As a matter of fact, even if I know where I'm trying to go, I will often put in my destination into ways to see if it's going to take me a different way than I was going to go. Yes, even if I know how to get to my destination, I sometimes, a lot of times, will still put it into ways, I ask, to make sure to see if the way that I think to go is clear or if I should go another way. You see, the reason I do this oftentimes is because ways gets its information from a satellite 
light that's high in the sky and can see what I can't see on the road ahead. I now have learned through trial and error. Had to let that marinate for a second. I've now learned, come on somebody, through trial and error to, 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 an era, to not deviate from the directions that Waze gives me because its job is to get me to my destination as quickly and as safely as possible. But I mentioned that it was through trial and error that I learned to trust Waze. I used to be the guy, I used to be that guy, that guy that would put my destination in the Waze, but I thought I knew better, a better way than, than, than it would tell me so I would go my own way and inevitably almost every single time I would get stuck in one too many traffic jams or road problems so finally through trial and error I learned to trust ways to God I follow the direction that ways gives me because it can see what I can't see on the road to where I'm going. Come here, somebody. We get ready to get out of here. I need to tell you that I know that at times we want to deviate from God's plans and directions for one reason or another. Maybe it's to be comfortable. Maybe because it's easy. I don't know what it is, but a lot of times we want to deviate from God's plans and directions for one reason or another. But I want to encourage you right now here today in this fresh start Sunday morning that no matter how hard Hard you think it may be, follow the directions of the Lord because the directions he is trying to take you, it will not only grow or grow you, but it will bring him glory. I know you may not be able to see clearly the road ahead, but God can because he sits high and he looks low. He knows more about us than we know about ourselves. And not only does he know about us, he knows where he's trying to get us to go. God knows exactly what you and I need to get victory in Jesus. Jesus name. And isn't that what we want? We want the victory. Somebody shout out or type in the chat room. I want the victory. I want victory for my family. I want victory in my finance. I want victory for my health. I want victory for my heart. I want victory for my friends. Watch this. I even want victory for my enemy enemies. Because if God is blessing them and I still got to be around them, that means I'm still in the circumference of a blessing and I can get whatever is left so God can bless me. I want the victory. And in order for us to get the victory, we got to ask God. Come on, somebody. We got to believe God and we got to obey God. What's your problem? What's your situation? What's your circumstance? If you want the victory, somebody shout out victory. Yes, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. I told Satan, come on, somebody, to Get thee behind because victory, say it with me, is mine. It can be yours too if you ask God, believe God, and obey God so you can start good, work through it good, and finish good. Nobody said it would be easy. But I promise you, if you follow God, it will end up great. No matter how it ends, if God is in it, it's going to be all right. God desires to bless you. God desires to get you through. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Just ask him, believe him, and obey him. Come on, say it with me. Ask, believe, obey. Come on, type it in the chat room. Say it out loud. Ask, believe, obey. Get it in your spirit. Ask, believe, obey. And if you ask, believe, and obey God, you'll be off to a good start in Jesus' name. And anything that God is in is all right with me. Watch God work it out on your behalf. If you ask, say it with me, believe and obey in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! I don't know about you, but I want everything that God has for me and my family and everybody I'm connected to. As pastor and servant leader as De at Destiny Church, I'm honored to be connected to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice. And I
Excuse me, I got to tell you, I want God to bless you. I want God to give you a double portion. I want God to bless everything that you're connected to according to his will. I want him to bless your family. I want him to bless your home. I want him to bless your health. I want him to bless your finances. I want him to bless your relationships. Oh, I don't have a relationship, Pastor. I want him to bless you to get one if that's what is in his will. I want him to bless you beyond recognition. And it all begins with asking. Asking her, believing and obeying in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I feel good just knowing that God will do exactly what he said for you, for you, for you, and for me. And all it requires for us to have a good start or to start good in whatever it is, is for us to ask, to believe, and obey. Because God wants to bless you. God wants to take you to the next level. God wants to get you through. He doesn't want you to stumble through. He wants to carry you through. And if you want to have a good start to whatever it is, you just got to ask, believe, and obey. Listen, we get ready to get out of here. I want to thank you for joining with us today. We're going to end this message in a word of prayer. Listen, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, or you have been faltering, listen, all you got to do is ask him to come into your heart. All you got to do is tell him, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross, was buried and rose again for my sins. I believe that, and I confess that with my mouth, oh God. You say that to, to Jesus, and you invite him into your heart, and he'll save you. He'll do exactly that. He'll do what he said and save you and give you the keys to eternal life. But if you're here today, and you've already accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you still need to seal it, to fortify it on this first day today of the rest of your life, I want you to pray along with me. You can pray out loud or you can pray silently, but let's pray together right now. Our Father and our God, how we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good and gracious to us to allow us to see it. Recognize, God, you didn't have to do it, but you did. You woke us up this morning. God is going on our way, and for that, we want to tell you, thank you. We thank you for today being the first day of the rest of our lives. Father, we pray for those who never accepted your darling son, Jesus Christ, and the pardon of their sins. We pray, oh God, that they would receive him right now and that you would receive them. We pray, oh God, that you hear their prayer of confession their prayer of belief and acceptance of Jesus Christ right now today. But collectively, God, we all pray together. And we ask you to come into our lives in such a mighty way, oh Lord. We're asking you, Lord, for your direction. We're asking you for your correction. We're asking you for your protection, Lord. But not only are we asking, Lord, we believe that you'll do it. We believe that you can move us beyond our, our faults and our fears, God. We believe that you will fortify our faith so we can move with you, God. But not only do we ask, not only do we believe, oh God, but we're going to obey. We want to walk in your light. We want to walk in your love. And we want to labor for you. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would flow through these airwaves and bless each and every individual under the sound of my voice. Give us a new sense of being because of you. Give us a new sense of direction and let us know that every day that you allow us to wake up, we can start good as long as we start with you. We can move through good as long as we move through with you. And we can finish good and great, come on somebody, if we just do it with you. Again, God, we just want to tell you thank you, we love you, and we adore you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Together in love, we say amen, amen, and praise God. Listen, my friends. I want to thank you for joining us here today at Destiny Church. We have been so blessed by your presence, but even greater than that, by the presence of the Lord. I pray that from this day forward, 
that you will have good starts by asking, believing, and obeying God through everything. Listen, on behalf of my beautiful wife, Valencia, and our family, and the entire family here at Destiny Church, we want you to have a blessed and amazing day, rest of the week, and life. Come on, somebody. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care, and God bless. Listen, be blessed and continue to be a blessing. God bless you, and heaven smile on you. Take care. God bless. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Ask, believe, obey. You got this. You got this. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care. We love you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lord. Take care, family. God bless you.